Hello everyone, Namaste to all. So today I am going to discuss the last few points of the salient features of the Information Technology Act. There are two videos I have made in which I have discussed few points of the salient features. So as I said earlier, I have summarized the whole act into just 18 points and in these 18 points I have made them into three videos. I will be leaving the links in the description box. You can just click on the link and can watch those videos also. And in these three videos also, I will be leaving the PDF link of this particular topic which I have prepared on my own. You can just click on that and you can download the document and can prepare for the exams also. Right? So, let's start the today's video. And this, the first point is that the Act provides for the establishment of different enforcement agencies. Certain examiner of electronic evidence, etc. So, what is meant by certain? Certain is nothing but Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. I'm coming again. Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. So, why is it there? That is the platform provided by the government for the purpose of creating awareness to the public and to invite the issues from the public with regard to the attacks which have been made against them on their systems. So whatever the kind of cyber attack it may be, the public are welcomed upon that platform to mention about the attack which they have faced. Such kind of attacks can be intimated in the certain website. If you are interested, you can just click on the link which I will be providing in the description with regard to the certain website. Then coming to the next is appointment of adjudicating officers. So in the earlier video, I have discussed about the cyber contraventions. Cyber contraventions are the things which attract the civil liability. That means penalties will be attracted onto the cyber contraventions. So according to that, who is the authority that has to decide such cyber contraventions is adjudicating officer. So he is the person who will be deciding the cases with regard to the cyber contraventions that means which attract the civil liability or penalties. Next, third point is that the act does have extraterritorial application. Why it is necessary to have extraterritoriality in the case of IT, in the case of information technology crimes is that we are in the cyber space which does not have any boundaries. We are in this world of internet. That means that it's not necessary that the criminal should commit the crime only by staying in within the country. Right? Any cyber attack can be done from any part of the world that need not be within the same country. Then if the extra territory application is not there, then how can you bring that cracker from the other country and make him punishable in India? Right? The act must and should have the extra territorial application. So this concept has been derived with regard to the IT Act from the effects jurisdiction. This is a theory on which the jurisdiction in the cyberspace has been propounded. What it actually means is the person by sitting in US if had committed any cyber attack in India. That means he had done the action there but the effect of that action is in India. So the India which is a victim country must and should have the power to bring him before the Indian court of law. Right. This is nothing but extraterritoriality. The last point is act does not apply to these things. What are they? Yes. Conveyance of the property. Any kind of transfer of the property. IT act is not applicable. Next is will. And then trust. The next GPA that is general power of attorney. In this case also the act is not applicable. And last is NIAC, Negotiable Instruments Act. So immediately you will be getting a doubt if you have watched my previous video. In the previous video I have told that in the NA Act also the provisions have been amended according to the IT Act. And here I am saying that it is not applicable to NI. What is this? 
No, IT Act is not applicable to MA Act except check. For check, IT Act is applicable and, and because of that only we are having the e-checks now. But when you take the other NI, that is other negotiable instruments like promissory note and bill of exchange, the IT Act is not applicable there. Right? So, these are the last few points with regard to salient features of the IT Act 2000. So, with this, we are done with the salient features of IT Act. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you are having any doubt with regard to this topic, you can just leave your doubt in the comment box and then I will surely give the reply to your comment. Thank you. We will meet in the next video. Namaste.